Welcome to Match Pack, your guide to all the facts and figures ahead of this weekend's Premier League fixtures. The battle to beat the drop is intensifying, and Watford face Leeds this weekend. The Hornets are desperate for three points, but they've managed just two league victories at home all season. Chelsea conceded four to Brentford last weekend, more than they'd let in across their previous seven league games. The Blues aim to return to winning ways at Southampton. But for many, the game of the weekend comes at the Etihad, and there's just one point between title chasers Manchester City and Liverpool. Space on the right for Gomez. Good ball in, shot him with the header. Beautiful Liverpool goal. It is Fabinho. The three points is theirs. Manchester City, it's over to you. This is Sterling in towards De Bruyne, and that's the opening goal already. Thumped in by Kevin De Bruyne. Oh, this is Gundogan, and that's 2-0. Manchester City in complete command. It's as you were at the top of the table. Both Manchester City and Liverpool picked up maximum points last weekend. Each side has eight games remaining in the race for the title, and with just a point separating them as they prepare to meet at the Etihad on Sunday, it's all to play for. The way it's sat and the way the league is situated now, I would honestly say it could decide the title. The games that both teams have coming up are very, very tough games. And there's a lot of potential games where both teams might drop points because of the situation of the Premier League at the minute with people fighting for survival and people fighting for the top four. So as much as it could be a title decider, there's also the possibility that teams will still drop points. At first glance, it's City that have the kind of run-in. After Liverpool, they face just two teams currently in the top half of the table, West Ham in match week 37 and their yet-to-be-scheduled game against Wolves. Things aren't so straightforward for Jurgen Klopp. They host Manchester United in match week 33, just five days before the Merseyside derby. And on May 7th, they welcome Antonio Conte's Spurs to Anfield. This weekend's meeting between the top two sees the league's strongest defence host the best attack. Pep Guardiola's side have conceded just 18 goals, City's fewest ever at this stage of a season. Meanwhile, Liverpool's total of 77 scored is at least seven more than any other side in the division. I expect it from a team of Klopp's. The way they play, the players they have, especially with the signing Diaz, it came and it seems like he was meant to be in the Premier League his whole life. He just slotted straight in, he has the work, determination, he has the tactical awareness and he's got the skills and the dribbling tactics to cause problems and score goals. So I think with the implement of him and Harvey Elliott coming back, that gives Salah and Mane that, that time that they can be taken off. So good is Liverpool's attack this season that they boast three of the league's top six scorers, with Mohamed Salah leading the way overall. Playing a system without a recognised striker, Manchester City's goals have been more evenly shared, five of their players scoring at least seven times. Everybody loves watching him, even as a neutral, you would like to watch City just by the way Pep hasn't played football. Some people say it's boring, but I think it's art, like to see the way they possess the ball. And they create a lot of chances and to be fair, they do score a lot of goals and that's even without a number nine. Salah. It is Sadio Mane! Gabriel Jesus and Phil Foden. That is a super finish. Salah. Escape Cancela. Oh, it's brilliant from Mo Salah. And still, Salah. Oh, sensational! Foden. Walker steps over it. De Bruyne! Another gem of a goal! In a gem of a game! Despite having to come from behind twice to secure a point in the reverse fixture, City could have run away with it had they been more clinical. They had twice as many shots as their opponents, but hit the target with just three of their 12 attempts. That result means there remains little to choose between the two men in charge. Guardiola had a slight edge in Germany, whilst Jurgen Klopp has won one more game since they moved to England. On Sunday afternoon, they'll meet for the 23rd time in all competitions. They don't come much bigger than this. It's great for the Premier League and it's great for the, the neutral spectator that the title's going to the wire. And both teams have been fantastic and probably 
the best two teams in the world right now for me. It's going to be exactly like the first game they played. They're both going to throw punches at each other and no one's going to back down. They're going to give as good as they get and it will be an intense game to watch. Manchester and Merseyside also collide at Goodison Park this weekend. Manchester United can't afford any more slip-ups in their pursuit of Champions League football, but Everton are just as desperate for the points as they scrap for survival. Defeat to Burnley on Wednesday felt huge, with the Clarets leaving the field buoyant and Frank Lampard's men dejected. Three more goals conceded means they've now let in 52 in the Premier League this campaign. Their expected goals against total is 47.7, so according to Opta's model, they've shipped 4.3 more than they should have. Only Leeds have a worse XGA difference. Bruno Fernandes and his friend, it's one inch. Strip for end salvation. Fast becoming Ralph Rangnick's rock in the midfield. Fred is contributing to his side all over the pitch. The Brazilian was on the ball more than any other player in last weekend's draw with Leicester, and his equaliser against the Foxes could prove vital come the end of the season. And if Manchester United are to make the top four this campaign, it's likely that Bruno Fernandes will play an important part. Since the start of the season, no other player in the Premier League has created more chances than the Portuguese international. This will be the 60th meeting in this competition between these two Premier League ever-presents. And across the 59 previous encounters, history is firmly on Manchester United's side. This fixture last season saw the Red Devils put three past the Toffees to leave Merseyside with all three points. Bernard had put Everton 1-0 up, but a quick brace from Fernandes turned the game around. And Edinson Cavani calmly slotted home to secure the win in the 95th minute. Spurs enter the weekend in fourth place and now face Aston Villa. The last meeting between these two sides saw Pierre-Emil Hoybier put Spurs 1-0 up and though Ollie Watkins levelled things up in the second half, Tottenham took the points when Matt Target put the ball into his own net for 2-1. The then Spurs manager Nuno Espirito Santo claimed his players were unstoppable after a confident performance at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. His side had the bulk of possession, had more passes across the 90 minutes and registered over twice as many shots on target as their visitors. Ollie Watkins' strike was the biggest positive for Villa that day and he's finding form once again. After scoring on his first England start during the international break, he grabbed his eighth Premier League goal last weekend. He'll be crucial if Steven Gerrard is to break the villains out of their current slump. For Spurs, Hoybier's contributions in midfield are likely to be as important as ever. The Dane celebrated a rare goal in the reverse fixture, but much of his work is understated. This season, he's completed 89% of his passes and won 62% of his tackles. That solid platform has helped those further forward thrive, and since the turn of the year, Antonio Conte's side have scored 30 times in the Premier League. It makes them the division's top scorers in that time, and confidence is flowing ahead of their trip to Villa Park. Rafinha, he's took the cross out, and it's swept all the way in! It's Ward Prowse! Trademark! James Ward-Prowse scored his 13th direct free kick in the Premier League last Saturday to ensure Southampton earned a point at Leeds. It means the Saints captain is now above Thierry Henry and Gianfranco Zola on this list and only behind dead ball specialist David Beckham. James Ward-Prowse is a, a model pro. He is the person that would always stay out after. And you see how he does with the set pieces, free kicks, penalties, etc. I promise you, every day he would get four mannequins down the bottom on his own and just go up and over the wall all the time. So when you see him score so many free kicks and he's, he's not too far away from David Beckham's record now, it's no luck. That guy has practiced and practiced and practiced for so, so long. He deserves all the credit that he's getting. The draw at Ellen Road gave Southampton their 14th point on their travels this season. 
The Saints have performed better at home this term, though, picking up eight more points and conceding less than a third of their total goals at St Mary's. Home form is, is very important. I think the way it is you try and turn the home ground into such a tough place to be. You win your games there, and then if you can pick anything up on the road, it's a bonus. But home form is certainly important. You need to get your home fans on your side. And listen, it's a tough place to go. It's as simple as that. And St Mary's is one of them. When you get in front, the fans certainly get behind you. Tony. Yanult again. What a finish that was. Listen. What a scoreline at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea 1, Brentford 4. One of the shocks of the season came at Stamford Bridge on Saturday as Brentford ran out 4-1 winners at the home of the European champions. Chelsea had the lion's share of possession and shots, but it was a result that underlined the gap between the Blues and the top two. Chelsea still got a little bit more to do to catch Liverpool Man City. Um, they're a football club that does very well in the Premier League. Their target is to be Champions League football year in, year out. The top four is where they want to be. They know the fifth and sixth is not for them. But to catch Liverpool and Manchester City, there's still a little bit of work to do. So for them, if they could come away with a trophy this year, then great, I think that would be a successful season for Chelsea. One of Chelsea's standout players this campaign has been Kai Havertz, who now looks settled into life in West London. And the Blues perform remarkably better when he's in the side, scoring more goals and seeing their win percentage increase dramatically with the German in the team. I rate him really highly. Uh, I didn't know a lot about him when he came over. It took time to settle in, but he's that old school throwback as, as such, but he's very technical, very talented player. Drogba used to score in all them big games. I'm not comparing him to Drogba, but Drogba was always the stand-up person, always stood out in them games. For me, in them finals, or big games, Kai Havertz seemed to take the ball by the horns, you know, and I think he's going to have a massive part to play in the future of Chelsea Football Club. St Mary's is a venue that's rarely proved problematic for Chelsea. They won 3-0 there in 2018, 19 and 4-1 the following season. The most recent matchup on this ground offers Southampton a glimmer of hope though. A Mason Mount penalty was required to earn the visitors a draw. But from the Blues 13 visits to the stadium, they've only returned to the capital empty-handed once, winning 9 times. They've also found finding the net there relatively easy, scoring an average of more than 2 goals a game. And one area they may look to exploit to further that tally is through headed goals. Southampton have conceded a league-high 12 headers this season, whilst Chelsea's 11 scored is only bettered by Liverpool. But can Ralph Hasenhutl's side rise to the challenge on Saturday? It's going to be tough. Southampton have lost three home games all year. But you have to back the away team, I think. They look at that game, they're, they're heavy favourites and they want to take the three points. Arsenal's next test in their quest for Champions League qualification is a home game against Brighton. Mikel Arteta saw his side well beaten by Crystal Palace on Monday and with arch-rivals Tottenham thumping Newcastle, goal difference is no longer in the Gunners' favour. They do still have a game in hand on Spurs in the race for fourth, but that's away at Chelsea and they'll have to do better there than in their most recent London derby. 40% of their attacks against Palace came down the left, but whether it was Smith-Rowe, Martinelli or Nketiah, it was a frustrating evening in front of goal. Gabriel. Here's Nketiah. It's a nice ball by Saka to Smith-Rowe and Odegaard. Couldn't quite get the right connection. Arsenal's recent struggles in the final third are dwarfed by Brighton's, however. Since the turn of the year, Graham Potter's men have reverted to their old bad habit of severely underperforming their XG. In 2022, they have an expected goals total of 17.2, but have found the net just nine times. And their goalless draw with bottom side Norwich continued their dismal record in April. Since their promotion to the Premier League, the Seagulls have played 15 games in this month. They've lost seven, drawn eight and never won. They've also failed to score in each of their last three against Arsenal. But the Premier League head-to-head -head is totally even. Three wins apiece and three draws. The first meeting at the Emirates went the way of the hosts. But the following season, it was all square, with each side converting a spot kick. 
and Brighton went one better in December 2019. Goals from Adam Webster and Neil Mopay, securing a 2-1 win for Graham Potter. Chelsea 1, Brentford 4. Last weekend was the stuff of fairy tales for the Bees as they thumped their illustrious West London neighbours. Next up, another capital clash with West Ham, their visitors. And Thomas Frank will hope his side can add to their tally of nine goals scored against fellow London clubs this term. Boom up. It's Ericsson. They've turned it around. West Ham's victory over Everton in match week 31 keeps their top four hopes alive. It was a historic day for Aaron Cresswell too, whose opening goal was the fourth time he's converted from a direct free kick, the most by a West Ham player in Premier League history. It's Cresswell. Oh, it is absolutely magnificent. Time for our quiz question. James Ward-Prowse now has 13 goals from direct free kicks, more than any other current Premier League player. But of those still active, who's next on the list? The answer's coming up later in the show. Out there is a world of possibilities. But what about over there? And over there? Isn't that another world of possibilities? Thing is, possibilities are everywhere. But they don't believe in timelines or appear when you expect them to. And they certainly don't hang around waiting for you to show up. So maybe you should work with people who understand you, have a real sense of urgency, and a different take on the world's possibilities and how to turn them into realities. Immediately, if not sooner. Let's talk. Diskim knows that time isn't always on your side. That's why we're bringing you Diskim Delivered. Look for the Delivered icon on the Diskim app and prepare to arrive in an enchanting online world where we delight in taking care of the shopping for you. With more than 7,000 of your favorite Diskim products to choose from, all you've got to do is decide what you need. So our trusted deliver drivers can deliver to you within 60 minutes. Diskim delivered from us to you on demand. Check this out. It hasn't been such a long time since people first started shopping online and it was easy to keep up with the clicks. Little by little by little by more, the clicks added up to be more than the stores and e-tailers worked harder than ever before because they had to keep up with the clicks. No time for borders, got to stay in control to stay in the flow and continue to grow. But we'll help you keep up with the clicks. Driving forward and supplying Kuchka with the return ball. Big moment this, big save from Allison. Space on the right for Gomez. Good ball in, shot him with the header. And moments after a big save on one end, Liverpool conjure up a big moment of their own at the other. Following their defeat at Anfield, Watford are now back playing at Vicarage Road this weekend in a crunch clash with Leeds. But there's been few home comforts for the Hornets. They've collected just seven points on their own turf this term, fewer than any other Premier League team. Watford's home form has not been the greatest this season. In recent weeks, they've changed from a 4-4-2 to a 4-3-3, and it seems to be giving them some flexibility going forward because they have wide forwards. But one of the things I think they need to do is protect their fullbacks and make sure that if they are chasing the game to score a goal, they're not leaving themselves exposed in the middle and then conceding. What they might lack at the back, they make up for in attack. Of all players from the sides in greatest danger of the drop, Emmanuel Dennis ranks top for most goal involvements this term. Teammate Joshua King is also up there, so Roy Hodgson does have options in the final third. 
You've had Emmanuel Dennis who started the season like a house on fire and Josh King is someone that knows how to get goals. The issue is, can they do it when it's squeaky bum time and it's really high pressure games? I think this front three should be enough, especially given the fact that, you know, you have people like Islam and Saar, you will be buzzing to go forward. They should have enough to score goals and at least put themselves in contention for safety. Watford have eight games to save themselves, but a concern for Hodgson's men is that in the reverse fixtures against those sides this season, they only picked up four points. With their current tally standing at just 22, they'll need to do a whole lot more this time around. Leeds are now unbeaten in three, following their 1-1 draw at a home to Southampton. Jack Harrison opened the scoring for the Whites, and although a superb James Ward-Prowse free kick meant that it finished on as even, the return of Calvin Phillips was a huge positive. Stats show the Leeds-born midfielder makes a massive impact when he plays. This term, the team averaged more possession, more shots and fewer goals conceded per game when Phillips is featured. Most crucially, their points per game with him is 1.2, compared to 0.8 when he's been absent. Leeds have had loads of injuries this season, but one of their biggest injuries has been Calvin Phillips. He is the magneto to whatever they do. He protects the defence, he progresses their attacks, he is the man in the middle. And without him, the middle of the park has been empty for them and teams have just walked through them. So him being back is a massive, massive lift. Leeds have particularly struggled on their travels this season. They've conceded 38 goals on the road, at least five more than any other side this campaign. They do seem to have tightened up since the arrival of Jesse Marsh, though, and remaining solid across the final games will be vital. Since the reverse fixture, both clubs have changed manager. Watford twice, and when Hodgson and Marsh review that previous encounter, they'll see that Leeds dominated. There was just a single goal in it, though, and this weekend promises to be just as tense for both teams. Watford and Leeds is as close to a six-pointer game as you can get. Both teams are battling to make sure that they can secure Premier League safety. Watford's home form isn't the greatest. I've seen an improvement in Leeds. I know they have the ability to score goals. I know they're pressing forward. I know that Watford are as well. So I'm going to be safe and I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. At Carroll Road, another relegation six-pointer between Norwich and Burnley. Time's running out for Dean Smith's side, now winless in eight league matches and seven points from safety, with just eight games remaining to save their Premier League status. Gilmore. It's a splendid save by Ra. Burnley, though, are believing again after their thrilling 3-2 victory over another relegation rival, Everton, on Wednesday. In a game that had everything, the winner was supplied by Burnley's leading scorer this term, Maxwell Cornet, who now has seven Premier League goals to his name. Vitra pulls it back to Cornet, and Everton are punished, and this could be the winning goal now. Maxwell Cornet. Crystal Palace and Leicester, 9th and 10th in the table respectively, face each other at the King Power on Sunday. In the reverse fixture at Selhurst Park, despite being under the cosh in the first half, the Foxes found themselves two up at the break. But the Eagles got the goals their attacking intent merited in the second 45, with Michael Elise and Jeffrey Schlupp on target in a match that finished all square. Palace peppered their opponent's goal with twice as many attempts in that game. Although the quality of their shooting was perhaps what let them down, only four shots on target compared to Leicester's five. It was backs to the wall for Brendan Rodgers' men, who made 27 clearances, but their failure to keep the ball out of their net has been a frustrating theme throughout the season. They've only kept a clean sheet in 18% of their league games. The only time they've conceded in a higher proportion of matches was way back in the 1994-95 season. Crystal Palace arrive in the East Midlands full of confidence. Jean-Philippe Mateta scored the opener in their 3-0 win over Arsenal on Monday. And the Frenchman has become an important part of Patrick Vieira's front line. Two-thirds of his attempts this term have been on target. 
The fine victory over Vieira's former club took Palace's Premier League goal tally to 42 for the campaign. That means they've already surpassed their two most recent totals. Ten more across their final eight matches would make this their most potent season ever in this competition. After an impressive run for Newcastle at the start of the year, they've now recorded three consecutive defeats. And it appears seeing out the closing stages of matches is a struggle for the Magpies, who have conceded a total of 14 goals in the final 15 minutes. Lucas Moura, and here is Steven Bergwijn, five! Another win for Bruno Lage's side last time out keeps Wolves comfortably in contention for the European spots. They went two up against Aston Villa, but conceded a late consolation goal as Ollie Watkins converted from the spot. That took Wolves' total up to six for goals conceded from penalties this term. Watkins... Earlier we asked which current player is closest to James Ward-Prowse's total of 13 goals from free kicks. And the answer is Cristiano Ronaldo. CR7 has yet to score one in the Premier League since his return to Old Trafford, but with 11... It's 10 league victories in a row for Liverpool, but they still look up at Manchester City. The Etihad is set for a colossal clash on Sunday. Before that, though, nine other matches, starting at St James's Park on Friday night. Saturday's action begins on Merseyside as Everton entertain Manchester United. Watford Leeds follows. There are three games kicking off simultaneously on Sunday, including another relegation six-pointer at Norwich. But it doesn't get any bigger than the title showdown in Manchester. The top two this term and the dominant duo of recent seasons go toe-to-toe -to -toe once more. City, the hosts, the reigning champions, the league leaders. Liverpool, the visitors, the challengers, the most informed side in the division. Two teams in a league of their own with one point the difference between them. It may be early April, but this could be the contest that determines who celebrates in May. From Olivia Bazaglo and me, Danny Jameson, goodbye. <laughs>